Hey programmers, welcome back. It's time for our first exercise. So the way I have this course laid out is basically after every single lecture, we're gonna have an exercise that way you get to practice exactly what we covered during the lecture. And so what you wanna do is pause this video, go down to the link in the description and give this exercise a shot. So I think it's really important that you give each exercise an honest shot on your own. And then if you get stuck, feel free to jump into this video walkthrough while I'll step through everything together. So my walkthrough of this exercise begins in three, two, one, all right, let's get to it. And so looking at this exercise, what we're really just gonna practice is writing and running some very simple uh, JavaScript programs, really getting us used to the whole flow of using VS Code and our terminal uh, to actually write and run programs. So we'll start with part zero. And what we wanna do is go through the motions of setting up our development environment, which of course means we need to open up VS Code, right? So if you have it open, you should close it, right? To kind of start from scratch. And then what we wanna do is create a folder named my first program. So I'll go ahead and create that. I could just do that using my regular desktop, right? So I'll create a folder. You can feel free to create your folders wherever you want. I'm just gonna do it on my desktop. I'll call it my first programs. Now that I have this folder created, let me hop back into the instructions and they tell me that I should open up uh, this folder in VS Code. So to do that, I'll just open up my VS Code, nothing too fancy there. And then I'll wanna open up this folder, right? By default, it's not gonna open that particular folder, but I can just hit open folder over here, find my folder and then hit open. Then I'll have my nice VS Code session right inside of uh, my folder. So I'll make this full screen over here. And I know that I'm inside of my folder because in the sidebar, I can see the name of it, my first programs, right? Awesome. So continuing on, what we should do is create a file named greeting.js inside of this folder. And I can actually do that right in VS Code, right? So I can click right over here on that paper icon. And I want to call this greeting.js. So here is my greeting.js. And right now it's a blank JavaScript file. And it looks like inside of this file, we just want to uh, write a single line of code printing out hello world. And so let's go ahead and do that. So hopefully as you're working through these exercises, you're actually typing out uh, everything manually. I know it's really tempting, especially at the start to just copy and paste things. But remember, you want to be able to do all of this by scratch, kind of on your own, right? When it comes to being a programmer, you're not just copy and pasting, right? You're actually developing this code usually from scratch, right? So get comfortable and get that muscle memory just typing these characters. And so, there's our message, console.log. And what I want to do is just now run uh, this file. So there are a few things you'll need to check, right? You need to make sure that you save your file. You can use a shortcut for that. Then you need to execute it using Node inside of your terminal, right? So how do I know if my file is saved? Well, it should not have this dot over here. VS Code is gonna yell at you and tell you, hey, that you have something unsaved. So you can do Control S for my Windows people or Command S for my Mac people. So now that my program is saved, I wanna open up the terminal. I can open up the terminal that's uh, baked into VS Code. So there are a few ways to get there, right? What you can do is hop into view and then open the terminal. And it even tells you the shortcut over here. I'll use the shortcut, which for me is control and then the tilde key, right? And here is my integrated terminal. And just recall, right, maybe just some review, uh, once I'm inside of my terminal, I can run a command like ls, which will print out all of the files inside of my current folder, right? So here I have a greeting.js. So at this point, I'm ready to run my file because I know that if I do ls, that I could see uh, the name of my file. If you're on Windows, then you can type in dir, and it'll be the equivalent of ls. But at this point, if you're either on Windows or Mac, you can just type in node, and then the name of your file, greeting.js. And remember my little shortcut, if I type in like gre, what I can do is hit tab, and it'll auto-complete the rest of that name for me. And so you're gonna be really important that you actually had saved your file as .js, otherwise you won't be able to execute it. And I know that this code works because like I expect, it just prints out hello world. All right, so that wasn't anything too crazy. Before we actually hop into the next part of this exercise, let me show you uh, something you can do at your terminal just in case you run into this situation, right? So like I said uh, in the lecture, the terminal is really just a text-based way that you can interact with your computer, right? Usually you're used to interacting with your computer by like clicking around and entering folders by just like double clicking on them, right? But you can use your terminal to do just about the same thing. You just have to know the right commands. So let's say you had a, a certain organization on your computer. Let's say that inside of myfirstprograms.js, I created an actual subfolder. You know that a folder can contain just regular files, but also other folders. And I'll call it, let's just say my inner folder, just to kind of play around with things. And inside of that inner folder, I created a file called another program. 
ls kind of just going on a quick aside uh, let's say i did ls now inside of my terminal bearing in mind that my terminal is just inside of the my first programs folder right so it's not quite inside of the inner folder yet so when i do ls i'm going to see everything immediately inside of my first programs which is just greetings.js and my inner folder but let's say that i wanted to actually execute another program right so let's say inside of this file just wrote something really quick and i'll just say another one and so what I need to do is actually bring my terminal to inside of this inner folder. And so to do that, new command for us would be just to do CD and then write the name of that folder, which is just inner folder. So CD stands for change directory. A directory is just another name for a folder, right? So right now I'm next to the inner folder. If I want to go inside of it, just say CD inner folder. And so when I do that, I'm actually now inside of that inner folder, which means I can run other commands like ls. And now I'm listing out what's immediately inside of the inner folder. And now at this point, of course, I could just run uh, this another program, right? By just doing that node command. And so you can totally use your terminal to hop in and out of folders, right? So right now I'm kind of deep inside of uh, the, my structure. I'm inside of the inner folder. Let's say I wanted to go back to like the parent directory, right? Notice that the inner folder is inside of my first programs. And so when I use like some terminology here, I'll say things like inner folder is the child directory or the child folder. And then my first programs is the parent, right? The parent is like the larger one, the one that contains the children. So let's say I wanted to bring my terminal to back outside and bring it just inside of my first programs. What I can do is say CD and dot dot. CD dot dot will refer to your immediate parent directory. Notice that now I'm back inside of my first programs, right? So feel free to use those commands. It's going to be pretty useful. But I digress. Let's get back into working through this exercise. So it looks like I need to create another file called whoami.js. And what I'll do is I'll just get rid of the inner folder that I was kind of just playing around with. So we'll take that out. And here I'll say whoami.js. Nice. And what do they want me to do? Well, you should just print out your first name. And of course, don't forget to put your quotation marks and also your semicolon. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to console.log and I'll print out Alvin, which is my name. Nice to meet all of you. And let's go ahead and execute this. Uh, fun little trick. Um, I'm a huge fan of clearing out uh, all of the text in my terminal. So uh, let's say that you're on Mac. If you want to like wipe the screen clean, you can do clear, right? Very self-explanatory command. If you're on Windows, I believe the command is CLS, probably stands for a clear screen, right? And so from this point, I can just run who am I? So I'll do node and then write the name of my file, who am I dot JS. And there I see Alvin printed out. So something else I want to kind of bring up at this point, kind of just throwing in some new things into the mix. You may have uh, run into a scenario where maybe you have forgotten to put a semicolon over here. That's actually going to be okay in some circumstances, but as a general like best practice and what I'm going to do in this course for the entire time is put semicolons where I need to, right? So for now, I do want us to include uh, these semicolons. And really, you're probably curious, like, why do I have the option, right? Usually, if there are multiple ways of doing something, it actually has a practical, you know, implication in our code. Let's say that I printed out multiple things like my first name and then like my last initial. So I'll say Alvin Z. And I actually ran this code. Notice that it is going to run both lines, right? Alvin and Z. It's going to print both things out. Nothing fancy there. And what you could technically do in JavaScript is put both of these commands on the same line. So in other words, I'm not going to break a line. So I'll just put them all on one line. If I actually save and run this code, this is still valid JavaScript, right? And that only works because I put the semicolon where I should have. Right. Recall that semicolon is kind of like the period, I guess, uh, when it comes to the JavaScript language. So it will separate commands, even if there's not a new line character to separate them. Right. So this is valid. However, if I did not put any semicolons, then technically this would no longer be valid code. You can see my VS code already complaining about something over here. And so as a general best practice, it's going to be pretty useful to just add those semicolons where you should. And I'll try to emphasize where we should put our semicolons as we get further in the course. All right, so let's keep it rolling. Looks like I have something very similar for the next one with a little less specific instructions. I want to create a file called thirsty.js and have it print out the name of my favorite cold beverage. So let me go ahead and do that. So again, just doing some stuff in VS Code, we'll create a file, I'll call it thirsty.js. And let me go ahead and console.log my favorite cold beverage, which is coffee, iced coffee, I guess. Let's go ahead and run that. Nothing too crazy over here, right? 
So node spelling thirsty wrong, thirsty.js. Cool, and there it is. And then looking at the last program I need to write, it's gonna be called AJS, and all I should do is just print out my age, very similar to these previous programs I wrote, just repeating the same pattern. So something that I'm a huge fan of when it comes to learning a new skill, especially programming, is just like the repetition of it. I think where a lot of like first time learners or just learners in general go wrong is they don't repeat enough, they don't drill it in, right? You want these operations like creating files and writing code to be like almost second nature to you before you hit like the next stage of your learning, right? Before you learn the next thing, that way you can focus on what's new, right? And you don't have to struggle with what's old. So when it comes to these exercises, and you may find them a little repetitive, but it's really the whole point, right? Hopefully as you keep repeating these exercises, it gets like easier and easier for you each time, right? The goal of this course is to make you very proficient as programmers, right? So I'll create my age.js file and I'll print out my age. So I'll console.log zero which is how long I've been doing YouTube. And so let's go ahead and run this. So node age.js. Nice, and there we have zero printed out. Fun little bit that will kind of lead very nicely into the next video, which is gonna be a lecture, is you can actually omit or not put the quotation marks around this number because numbers are a totally valid thing in JavaScript, right? So writing this works all the same. And of course you can type in any number that you want. And we'll actually get to this in the next video. So that's all I got for this walkthrough for this first exercise, really just going through the motions of writing and running your very first programs. In the next video, we're gonna learn something new. So if you had trouble with this exercise, uh, feel free to repeat the exercise, and I really recommend you do, and use the video walkthrough to get yourself unstuck. But what you should use as your signal to move on to the next video is when you're able to complete this entire exercise all on your own and feel very confident doing it. So I'll see you in the next one.